Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be going through the matrices and data frames. Data frame is one of the most important uh, data structure in R. And uh, recently there's Python. Python has uh, borrowed the concept of data frame and it is implementing the pandas data frames, a uh, pandas package. So yeah, data frame was uh, a originating in R. Okay, let's look at the R Studio. Okay, seven matrix and data frame. In this lesson, we'll be covering matrix and data frames. Both represent a rectangular data type. It's like table, a column, and the rows, meaning that they are used to store tabular data with rows and columns. The main difference you will see matrix generally contains only a single class of data numbers, generate numbers. While data frame can consist of many different class of data, like strings, numbers, boolean values, true false values. Let's create a vector containing number 1 through 20 use a column operator. Do you still remember it? My vector. Vector, how do we do that? One. 20. Okay, view the content of it. My vector. vector. 1 to 20. Dimension. Now, dimension is a function to tell you the dimension of the object. How many rows, how many columns. Uh, is this one dimension, two dimension, and three dimension. My vector. <coughs> What's that? Oh, okay. D -I -N. D -I -N. So it says the my vector has no dimension. No dimension. It's not very helpful because uh, my vector is a vector. It doesn't have a dimension attribute. So we can find the length using the length function. Instead, if it's one dimensional uh, vector, we use the Length to find out how many depth 20. So basically, it's one, uh, one row, 20 columns. Oh, it's a column vector, and it's a column vector, and there's only uh, 20 number, 20 elements. So if we give a vector dimension, it will see this dimension. Vector dimension. Let's give it a try. Okay. So. Dimension is used to set the dimension as well. We assign a value to the dimension attribute of the my vector. Let's have a look what is the dimension of my vector. Okay, my dimension has now become four times. Uh, four rows, five columns. So now when you look at these, it becomes four rows, five columns. So we're transforming it from a one-dimensional uh, vector, which contains 20 values, to a two-dimensional matrix. Let's have a look at attribute one. Okay, dimension four times six. Okay, four times four times five. Four rows and five columns. And they become two dimensional object. My vector is now looking differently. So say class class my vector. So class my vector become a matrix earlier is not a matrix. So yeah, you say vector only. <coughs> okay, so store the value of my vector in a new variable, my matrix. Okay. Okay, there are different ways to create a matrix. We call matrix function. Let's see how we do that. Okay, you see matrix matrix. 
here is the matrix. I'm actually calling the matrix function and create my matrix too. How do we create data, row, columns, blah blah blah? My matrix, same number 1 to 20, data is 1 to 20, 20, and the uh, and row, and rows. How many rows do we? How many rows? Four rows. And uh, and columns to five. Okay, so we have created this my matrix too. First is the same, try it out. I actually identical use the identical functions to find out if they are the same. My matrix and my matrix two. Let's see whether they are the same. Okay, true. That means my matrix and my matrix two are the same. We use it two different ways to define the matrix. Okay, count factor contain the name of our patient Bill, Gina, Kelly, and Sean. Remember that double quotation is needed. Story now. Okay. Instead of trying it, let's explain it. So patient have a column vector Bill, Gina, Kelly, Sean. Then we assign to patient. Okay. Well, just call C one was two. Okay, let's see. let's see. Explain it. See by patient my matrix. So it binds. C binds means called column bind. I combine columns. So patient become a column vector, one dimension, Bill, Gina, Kelly, Sean. So four elements. And the earlier our matrix is a 20 number, which is four times five. So it concatenate a new column, patient column with the original matrix. Okay, we left a matrix of character string. So in this case, the matrix with a character string. So it's a mixture of data types. If you remember in the back, I told you matrix can only contain one class. So therefore, then we try to combine character vectors with a numeric. I will force the number of characters, force, coerce, coerce the numbers to character, since double quotation. So <clears throat> matrix contains only one type of data, either all numbers or all characters. So the R has forced these one, five, one, two, three, four, the numbers two characters. So that has uh, so that they have the double quotes there. So this is a message what is saying here. Implicit. Okay. So now we say we use a kind of called data frame concept. So data frame can contain mixed type of data. So we have more flexibility still. So instead of okay, this is the method. So we still combine patient with the numeric my matrix uh, and we convert it into a data frame. So let's see what my data is now. You can also see from here. My data for so this is view my data. View my data is view my data. My data is become patient x1 to x5, which is all the numbers, and uh, this is a data frame. Okay, so this is a data frame, patient, numbers. And these are still numbers, but patient are characters, uh, strings. Then the class function will tell you the type of this object, my data object. What is the object is it? It is a data frame. So it's no longer a matrix. If you use class of that area matrix one or matrix two, you will get a matrix. Okay, we have six columns, 
patient name and the remaining is x1 to x5 and now we want to give them names yeah, column names in the data frame so it's like a tables uh, how many rows and different columns and column have a column name so the first one is patient and the rest of it is called uh, age weight unlike here if you can see here the original one is x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 we want to replace it with a new name age weight bp uh, rating and test how do we do that we need to create a vector containing one element for each of the column so we create a vector called a c names c names c names equal to okay now we use column functions column name functions How do we use it? Column name function. Let's have a look how to do it. Column names. X is the data frame. So column values. Let's have a look. Use a column name to set the column attribute for our data frame this is similar to it let's try this column names and it says x do now x x is a matrix like our object which is our uh, my data right my data my data prefix for creating names prefix equal to the C names okay it says this is the right way of doing it this is the right way of doing it okay so column names my data and assign the column names to that okay so now print it again So now the x1 to x4 has been changed to a more meaningful column names. And uh, let's refresh it, close it, and we open it again. Open it again. Okay, it doesn't allow us to open it, but let's do it later. Okay, so we have completed this one. So we have learned the basic of working with two very important comma data structures, the matrix and the data frame. So matrix generally contain only one type of data, either it can be all strings or all numbers. If there is mixed, then they will convert string um, numbers into string. While data frame, they can have mixed uh, type of data inside it. So basically you can think of data frame as kind of Excel tables with many rows and many columns and each column you can assign a column name later you can refer to a individual values by using that column name okay it's like name the vector so all the name the vector combine them together they become a two-dimensional table okay so this is the end of this uh, section okay inspect Let's look at inspect let me expect this part there. Okay, so yep, we exit it first, then I show you the my data. So you view data. So you can see that the X1 to X5 has been updated with a more meaningful column names. Okay, that's the end of this uh, course. Uh, uh, see you next time.